Good morning, class of 2016, and congratulations. It is my distinct pleasure this morning to introduce our 2016 honorary degree recipient, Tracy K. Smith. As you will see from your programs, Professor Smith is a highly distinguished writer having garnered myriad accolades, including the Pulitzer Prize. But rather than recount her long and impressive list of awards and prizes, I want to take a moment this morning to speak about the work that went into warranting that level of recognition. From her very first book of poems, Tracy K. Smith has introduced readers to a mind interested in the nuanced contours of the human experience, the questions that often define not the larger world we all inhabit, but the questions that aim to help us interpret our interior worlds. It is that sense of interior questioning that has permeated all of her writing. From her books of poetry to her beautiful memoir, Tracy K. Smith has resisted writing in the vein of grand gestures, taking instead her own lived experiences, which are layered with larger social issues as the springboard for her art. I, remind, I am reminded here of a poem from the great poet Lucille Clifton, who once wrote, why some people be mad at me sometimes. They ask me to remember, but they want me to remember their memories, and I keep on remembering mine. Well, Tracy K. Smith has been insistent on cultivating her memories as the defining shape of her poetic space, not as she is expected to, but as she actually lives them, taking in all the small fragments that make her and by turn us whole. We see this in so many of her poems, in lines like these. The sky here is clear of cloud and bird, just the sun blaring steadily through the ether. What moves is invisible, like music. I move in it, into it. It feels like nothing until it lets me go. It is that letting go, that silent sense of freedom, achieved only by the discovery of one's own position in the world where the power of Tracy K. Smith's language resides. And there can be no greater calling for an artist in this moment than that ability to cultivate her own memories and share with humanity not what the world expects of her, but the world as cast in her own light. President Kim, I present Tracy K. Smith to receive the degree of Doctor of Arts. Tracy K. Smith, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Arts honoris causa, with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, President Kim and Professor Shinoda, and I also want to thank the officers and trustees of the university faculty members, and all of the superheroes that we're honoring today. I am deeply honored and deeply humbled to stand before you today. And to our graduates, I remember being in your position about two decades ago and anticipating the blank slate that lay ahead, the wild, wide open world I hope to encounter and, if I was lucky, to mark. As an MFA student, I'd lived for two years in a frenzy of artistic becoming, what I still think of fondly as a variety of wanton apprenticeship. I was childlike, idealistic, more than a little reckless and naive, but I was also, like you, dedicated, determined, and doggedly serious. I was dead set on traveling the long and perhaps bumpy and yes, it is bumpy, path toward life as an artist. As a writer, I wanted to test my voice to see if it might be capable of saying something not just to the community of teachers and classmates who had come to know and understand me, but also to strangers and to the strange versions of myself 
that with luck and hard work, language would help me to find. On the brink of that kind of freedom, I found myself gripped with a mix of joy, pride, possibility, capacious hunger, and a crippling fear. I don't think it's mere nostalgia that makes me believe those conditions, that mix of exhilaration and terror, are still optimal for making art. On the contrary, I think that we grow most as artists and people when there is something far off and possibly unattainable in our sights, and when there is some huge piece of ourselves at stake. 20 years later, I recognize how much my life as an artist has had to do with trying to concoct ways of turning my back upon what I have come to trust and finding occasion to start all over again, as if from scratch. Once, during a period of debilitating writer's block, starting from scratch meant turning my attention to photography and learning to do in images what I had been trying and failing to do in words. After the publication of my first book, starting from scratch meant thinking less about myself in my work and more about distant others, a Native American boy taken from his family and put into a series of foster homes as part of a misguided government policy to reduce poverty in Native American communities, a group of Ugandan girls abducted and made to marry rebel soldiers and commit atrocities in the name of the Lord's Resistance Army, even America itself as rendered in our most indelible myths and our most despicable historic acts. More recently, starting from scratch has involved turning to other forms, opera, prose, translation. But lucky you, you shouldn't have to fabricate much of this just yet. You can race ahead from where you find yourselves today, drawing stamina and momentum from all of the energy and belief and appetite and fire you've tended these past years as members of the artistic community at Columbia College Chicago, a community into which I am extremely grateful to be welcomed today. And as you do race away from this moment, I hope you'll trust that we are all racing beside you in spirit. I hope you'll trust that we're watching and listening for the sounds of your voices and the evidence of your vision. I hope you'll sense the eagerness with which we await the many new worlds you are in the process of building into being. Thank you very much. <laughs>